Pulitzer Prize winning poet and the author of The Color Purple, Alice Walker says, thank you is the best prayer that anybody could say. Thank you expresses the extreme gratitude, humility, and understanding. In the spirit of that gratitude, I would like to start saying thank you to the wonderful Hillman family, David, Suzanne, Cheryl, and Richard. David and Cheryl are here. David and Cheryl, would you please raise your hand? Would you please accept our gratitude and appreciation? Thank you. We couldn't be here today. We couldn't get where we are today without your generosity, continued support, and faith in us. Thank you. The Prince George's County Executive, Russian Baker, is here to make his remarks also. Mr. Baker and his member of the office, would you please raise your hand? Thank you. I would like to acknowledge all the hard work that Nancy put in today to make this event unforgettable. Nancy, could you please raise your hand? Thank you. I also would like to extend our gratitude to key players of the undergraduate studies, especially the Associate Provost and the Dean for Undergraduate Studies, Dr. Bill Cohen and his entire team. Could you please raise your hand? Thank you. Tops, our adjunct, we owe you so much. Thank you. And Howard, our dear mentor, thank you for all you do for our students. I'm free to. Thank you. We couldn't be where we are today without the amazing team of the directors from Prince George's Community College and Montgomery College. But those two directors are Ruth and Rebecca. Unfortunately, Ruth, could, uh, Ruth is here, but Rebecca couldn't be with us. She's at Montgomery College recognizing the accomplishments of the Hillman Entrepreneur students at the award ceremony. But she sent her heartwarming congratulations to all our graduates. But Ruth is here. Ruth, would you please stand up or raise your hand? say but um, <laughs> when I see all the students and whatever I, it's kind of overwhelming to me um, I've been very fortunate I've been lucky in business I've worked hard and to um, put four or five hundred kids through college um, I think it's pretty cool <laughs> but, um, some of you um, of the students probably know that we've been kicked out of the engineering school. <laughs> We're going someplace else uh, for next year. But um, this is, it's a good thing because this is the last time um, that we're gonna have this ceremony in this lobby. Um, next year, you all are gonna graduate in a new hotel across the street. I want you all to know that I was six foot three when we started that class. <laughs> so, um, in all seriousness, um, congratulations to the graduates. Um, it, but I, I have some not so good news for you. Now you've done the easy part. Now you've got to come out in the world with us. Um, but I think 
uh, between your your education at the community college and then your years here at Maryland. I think you're well prepared for it, and the world just better look out, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't have much more to say, but I want to introduce my one of my. Well, he's talking to my daughter, so he's not here. <laughs> so, I was going to say something nice about him, but I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> the, the University of Maryland campus is obviously located in Prince George's County. Um, I, my company, Southern Management, started in Prince George's County almost 51 years ago, not very far from here as a matter of fact. Um, so we have very deep, deep, deep roots in this county. Um, we've been here a long time and we expect to be here a long time. After this, um, County Executive Rushern Baker is one of my really good friends, and I don't have a lot of friends. Not too many people really like me when they get to know me. But, so I'm not going to run for president like some other real estate developers. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I can't take the pay cut, but, <laughs> um, but uh, Mr. Baker has made um, marvelous changes in Prince George's County. This county, um, from a real estate developer perspective, is probably the best place to be right now in the whole Baltimore-Washington region. The county's changing rapidly. It's always been a pretty good place. Now it's going to be one of the best places in the country to be, and this is the right time. So, Mr. Baker. <laughs> Don't you love David? Can we give him another round of applause? So, so while, while David was giving his remarks, uh, Cheryl and I were over there talking. That's really what I like to do when David's talking, is to talk. So I was asking her about the program and um, you know, everyone comes through community college and then goes, goes on here to University of Maryland. And Cheryl was telling me that you can study anything you want except for law and political science. <laughs> and I found that really amazing because I am a lawyer. <laughs> I didn't study political science, but I did study history. I was almost a political science. I love it. That is so David. It is so him, isn't it? Um, I do want to thank David, and I want to thank Cheryl. Uh, can we give her a round of applause for all the hard work that she's doing? You know, I am not unlike many of you, um, and David knows this. Uh, you know, my getting to where I am is probably a surprise to a lot of folks, especially those who taught me in the early years. Um, I repeated the first and second grade, so I was always older than my peers uh, when I went to, uh, went to school. My dad was in the military, so we moved every two years. So when you're older than your peers, you move every two years, and somebody tries to challenge you in school, you know, you get in trouble. So as I, as I sometimes joke to my adults who occupy my house, um, you know, I got kicked out of every school in the United States and two in Okinawa, Japan. So, <laughs> so there is no one who would have thought that I would have been able to not only go to college, but eventually will become county executive. No one but my parents, who never thought for an instance that I would not go to college. They knew that, even though all the indicators said otherwise. And the other was a teacher that I had in 10th grade who required me to read a book. Even though I didn't want to, I wanted to play football, but I needed to have the grades and she made me do extra credit. And she had me read either Black Boy or Weathering Heights. And I chose Black Boy. And when I chose that book, the thing that it changed in my life, and I think the thing that David does, is that that book made me feel guilty. It made me feel guilty about the opportunities that were presented to me that I did not take advantage of. I thought my life was the same as every other child in the United States, and it wasn't. I was blessed to have parents that undergirded me, that when I failed, they picked me back up, when I needed help, they were there, but they were my safety net. And a lot of people didn't have that. They gave me that opportunity and it made me feel like I needed to do something else with my life to make a contribution. 
And that's what I've tried to do. That's what made me want to go into public service, to give others the chance that I got by God's blessing. Well, David's done the same thing. The Hillman family's done the same thing. You know, they have been very, very successful, and nothing requires them to give back. Nothing requires that they invest in programs like the entrepreneurial uh, program, or to build a quality hotel and conference center at University of Maryland, or to support a candidate who nobody thought could ever win the Office of County Executive, not once, not twice, but three times. But what, what moved them, and what continues to move them, is they see the potential in people. So one of the things that David did, he sent me an email of some of the comments that the students here made. And um, I have to tell you, I was moved. I was moved and, and he was moved. One, because, you know, he talked about the conversation you had with David and it's always interesting. He is who he is, uh, which is what makes him, makes him special. Um, but what got me was your comments, your vision, your hopes for your future, the contributions that you would make. And then one person said, I hope to make a lot of money. <laughs> That's what I've learned. I hope to make a lot of money. And then they said, so I can do what you're doing right now, that I can give back. If you leave with nothing else from this program, leave with that. We want you to be successful, very successful. But we also want you to remember that your parents, your families, and people that you didn't know gave you an opportunity so that when you got in a position or get in a position like the Hillman family, that you too can give back. And that really is the greatest contribution of mankind. God bless you and congratulations. Thank you again, Mr. Baker. Let's give him another round of applause. So up next, we're gonna hear from some of those very students. So our first student speaker is going to be Allison Hishma. Hello. Good afternoon, my name is Allison Hishma. I knew I would be able to speak today because I have a twin sister, so if anything happened to me, we could just get her up here as a backup. And, <laughs> uh, but to start, I'd like to say thank you as well to Mr. and Mrs. Hillman and Cheryl Hillman and the Hillman Family Foundation. I want to thank Ms. Bronco and Nancy and Rebecca and Ruth Lewis and our professors, Kat and Akas there, <laughs> uh, for their leadership and encouragement and support. Um, and thank you to honored guests, family, and friends for being here as well. I'm delighted to be here and share my thoughts. Uh, to my fellow 2016 graduates, congratulations. Yay! We finally did it. We're finally graduating. Um, and maybe not all of us on the same day or the same month, but soon all of us will experience that thrill of walking across the stage to receive our diploma after years of hard work. And, um, and paying off parking tickets at the University of Maryland. <laughs> really. Um, did you know this is our largest ceremony with our largest number of graduates in Hillman history? And I'm pointing that place. Hillman history. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, so this is my third time attending this ceremony. I was here last year as a student at the University of Maryland and the year before a student at McHenry College. And every year you can feel this energy in the room and it's incredible. And to hear the stories of what grads went through and, and the change that they're making now, it's, it's really something special. Um, so in 2013, I was part of that first Hillman cohort at Montgomery College. Can you raise your hand if you were too part of that first group? Yeah, that was the first group that was at Montgomery College. Um, and we all took a chance by joining the program. It was something that was new, it was a challenge, it was outside our comfort zone, and we all had different goals. We came from different cultures, and all of us had our own individual stories. From where I stand today, I think it's safe to say we made the right choice. 
I'm sure many of you heard, many of you heard David Hillman's story, um, but for those who haven't, let me share a few words. In 1965, Mr. Hillman seized the opportunity to create his own company, the Southern Management Corporation, which is now the largest real estate firm in the region. Yeah, that deserves a haircut. <laughs> and they own residential properties, communities, office centers, hotels. Their portfolio also ranges from properties like Bear Creek Mountain Resort, that was fun. <laughs> uh, very cool. Who fell during that? <laughs> Snowboarding and skiing. Um, and Conference Center Lehigh Valley in Pennsylvania and the new hotel 2017 at the University of Maryland. So big things. Um, and our group visited the hotel at Arundel and that's where David Hilleman shared his story and, um, and his vision and his mission and values at Southern Management. And that's what really sets his company apart. That's what makes him different. He talks about his key principle, how people are at the heart of everything they do. And thankfully for all of us, just as Mr. Hillman had the entrepreneurial spirit to build Southern management, he saw the opportunity to invest in students. Students like us with our own burning entrepreneurial spirit to one day lead or build our own companies. And for that, we're forever grateful. For many of us, it was Ms. Bronco who first introduced us to the Hillman program, and Ms. Bronco has an infectious passion for the program and for the community that surrounds it. You can see it in the way she spoke about the program. It was something you could feel. Have you ever had that when you hear someone saying something and you could feel it? That's Ms. Bronco. <laughs> it's because of Ms. Bronco that I joined the program. And through this program, all the students, we cultivated an environment of vision and a new kind of boldness. And all the students were gifted with a scholarship. Some of the students started new work opportunities. I work for an incredible company, uh, Computer Frontiers, and um, the president and founder of that company, Barbara Keating, is with us today. And Barbara's an incredible entrepreneur. And I couldn't thank her enough. Now she's an inspiration and mentor, and it's because of the Hillman program that I even had that connection started. And some students started travel opportunities, and we got different trips to go on, and business competitions. We attended networking events and started growing a stronger network and would meet these CEOs and incredible minds. But most importantly, all the students discovered the importance of giving back to the community. So just to wrap up here, I've had several students ask me about the Hillman program, ask me if the program was worth it, does it add value, um, Allison, did you benefit from what it offered? And from where I stand today, the answer is a simple yes. I believe the Hillman program is the perfect complement to the curriculum at the University of Maryland. I believe that we're all graduating with a more realistic, real-world view of business all because of this program. And we really said when we accomplish our goals, not if we accomplish our goals, but when we accomplish our goals, that we'll reach back to someone else and help them up through their journey. And we can empower other people. So just to end, I wanna say a quick quote by Tim Cook. And he says, for the most important decisions in your life, trust your intuition. And then work with everything else you have to prove it right. To everyone who touched our lives and believed in us, we say thank you. Thanks. Good afternoon and greetings to all. Special greetings to County Exec Rashawn Baker. Um, Mr. David Hillman and everyone here, thank you for coming and supporting us. My name is Dexter Price Jr. and I am an undergraduate student at the University of Maryland graduating with a degree in family science. And I wanna share a story with you that I haven't really, I haven't shared with anyone outside of my life. In 2008, I was an apartment property manager, not with Southern Management. <laughs> A resident whom I had evicted in the morning was aware my wife and I lived on the apartment community. 
This resident later that afternoon threatened my wife and I, and following this event, it left me mentally devastated. I found myself missing work, not taking showers, and sitting in the house routinely. Not aware of what to do, I started taking um, psychology classes at Prince George's Community College, and I made two A's my first semester. I wasn't sure of how, of how I could move forward, but a professor mentioned the Hillman program to me. I was very concerned about getting into the Hillman program because my high school grades were not good at all. <laughs> However, when I applied, Ms. Rawlins saw something special in me, and she allowed me the opportunity to be in the Hillman program. The Hillman program gave me the opportunity to finish my academic career at Prince George's Community College where I, um, I earned academic honors and attained an associate's degree in psychology. My next prospect was the University of Maryland. At the time, I was still a property manager and um, had free housing and a great salary. However, the curriculum at University of Maryland is, is full-time as well, so I was faced with a, a major decision. Do I quit school um, and go to, do I quit, I'm sorry, quit work and go to school? And ultimately, I decided to, to give school a shot and relieve myself of being a community manager and free housing and a good salary. My first semester, my wife and I didn't have a place to stay, stay because um, the apartment complex provided us housing, so we stayed with a family that had four kids that was married, and it was, uh, it was, it was rough. <laughs> I didn't do well my first semester, um, and I actually had to drop out. I remember Professor Carlson saying, you can lose your housing, but you can never lose your education. And so that, that stayed with me. So three, three years later, my wife and I were fortunate enough to buy an apartment building. It was a part of a strategic plan to get back to this place. And so once we purchased the apartment building, I reapplied to the University of Maryland and met Ms. Bronco. And once again, the Hillman program gave me a second chance. I would enroll in family science and begin an internship. And at this internship, I had the opportunity to uh, teach parenting classes. Um, I had the opportunity at this internship to go into high schools and meet with young men who were new parents. Um, I had the opportunity to be a part of child birthing classes for, for men who were having their first child. And this is all, all because of the University of Maryland and my family science degree. Today I'm going to, or in a few days, I'm going to graduate with over 3.0 in family science. And I just, want to, I just wanted to highlight one of the stories from many of the graduates today and tell you about my individual story. And without the Hillman program, I would not be here. Um, I have learned from my fellow Hillman students. I want to thank Eliana. I want to thank Ryan, who are fellow Hillman, Hillman students who spent a good amount of hours with me, making sure that uh, I got my coursework done and I was successful. I want to thank Nancy for freely giving up her time with several hours of editing papers and helping me balance six classes, an internship, a part-time job, a family. I don't know where she is, but I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to thank my high school sweetheart, who in August we will be married for 15 years. And she, <laughs> she never gave up on me. And she allowed my four-year-old son to come to most classes and every student in the Hillman program knows him and they, they may not even recognize me without my son. <laughs> so, David Hillman, I just wanted to say thank you and um, congratulations to all my fellow graduates. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Good, okay, great. Um, all right, so I have a written speech. I'm gonna try to stay on it, but I like to talk, so. <laughs> all right, so good afternoon. My name is Jasmine Claggett. 
I am soon to be a um, mechanical engineering alumni from this here Clark School. I am the only female graduating um, engineer in the, this Hillman cohort, as well as one of two African American females graduating with this degree in the entire university. And it gives me great honor to say that I truly appreciate all of the assistance and resources provided to me by the Hillman program. I don't know where I would be, honestly, <laughs> if it hadn't been for all of those people involved in the Hillman program, all of my peers, all of the connections that the Hillman has um, made for me, uh, the Maryland PTAP, uh, and I'm truly thankful for all of those who played uh, part of my role in my journey, I'm sorry. I would like to thank Mr. Hillman and his family for their kindness and generosity uh, to help me get to this position here. When people hear engineering, they typically think difficult classes and high salaries. Um, but neither of those were the reason why I chose mechanical engineering. When I was four years old, uh, my grandmother had her leg amputated uh, due to medical uh, complications. Because of the expensiveness of prosthetics, I was never able to see my grandmother walk again. Um, and thus, as a child, my sister had Barbie dolls and sometimes, you know, they would have run-ins with me. And um, there would be limbs that would be uh, broken and things like that. And I would work so hard to try to fix them. I'm trying to tell y'all, I used, you know, popsicle sticks, straws, I used tape, glue, everything, just to make them a prosthetic. At this young age, it was then where I dreamed of becoming the owner of a prosthetics company. I set out on a mission to make a difference, to provide uh, cost-effective prosthetics to those in need so that the next little girl can continue to go on walks with her grandmother or brothers can play outside normally, although one was born with a birth defect, or a girl involved in a horrific accident could resume her normal life. See, it was this vision that continued to push me through my journey. This degree is a huge accomplishment, but it's only one step in my grand scheme. I am thankful for the minor in technology entrepreneurship that will help me reach my goal of owning my own business. As the first woman in my family to graduate college, this journey has not been easy. And it didn't get any easier with the degree choice I chose. Trust me. <laughs> Be with me on May 19th. <laughs> um, but I am proud to call myself a Maryland Terp and a Maryland alumni. One of my favorite animals is the turtle. And the reason for that is, in order for the turtle to move, it must stick its neck out. There are gonna be times in your life when you're gonna to have to stick your neck out. There will be challenging moments of fear, but instead of hiding in your shell, you have to go out and meet those obstacles. I stand here today as proof that anything is possible, regardless of anyone saying that you can't, or people putting you down, or just the struggle. In reality, it all starts from within. You must believe in yourself enough to act. Take action. Every story you've ever connected with, every leader you've ever admired, every puny little accomplishment is a result of taking action. You have a choice. You can either be a passive victim of circumstance, or you can be an active hero in your own life. Be driven by your passion, and regardless of how many bumps there will be in the road, it will be the most fulfilling journey ever.
Thank you. Hi, my name is Caleb Kim. Um, it's just amazing to see how much the Hillman family has grown. Um, I studied abroad last semester, so for many of the new students who came in, um, my face might be very unfamiliar, but it's just amazing to see how much uh, Hillman has been growing within the University of Maryland. I'm graduating this semester um, with a major in electrical engineering, and like many of the students here, um, with a minor in technology entrepreneurship. Uh, my time as an undergraduate was uh, unforgettable, and I'm truly going to miss being a student. I know a lot of people, they're like so excited to graduate, but I'm truly going to miss being a student. Um, but I'm so excited for what's, what awaits all of us, um, all the graduates, in, into the future. I know that the relationship that I've made here uh, as a Hillman entrepreneur will remain with me. And you can expect to see me in, uh, as a Hillman alumni. Um, I've joined the Hillman Entrepreneurship Program back in 2012. During that time, I've, I, was very, I was struggling a lot with financials and um, having to manage work. Um, and I was struggling to get out of a financial disaster. Um, the year before, my mom had passed away from an illness and my dad had moved to Chicago. And so leaving me as a 17-year-old um, in Maryland, um, not knowing what to do with my life. Um, I, knew, I knew that I wanted to accomplish something with my, uh, and, to, and to reach my dream, I knew that I needed to go to college. But with the situation that I was in, I wasn't, com I wasn't com confident in myself and I wasn't confident in the fact that I could graduate from college. However, when I was accepted into the Hillman Entrepreneurship Program, it not only gave me the funding that I needed, it gave me the confidence that I needed as well. Receiving this scholarship meant that there were people who believed in me and supported me to reach my goals. I would first like to thank Ms. Lewis, uh, Ms. Lewis who accepted me into the program, and, and Ms. Gould who always, always believed in me. Although, I'm, although I majored in electrical engineering, I've always had an entrepreneurship spirit. I always wondered how I could tie in entrepreneurship with engineering. And this really helped me with, with all of my coursework that I've, I've taken. For, for instance, this past semester, past summer, um, I gave a presentation at my internship, Baltimore Gas and Electric, uh, to all the department heads, all the interns, and including the CEO, about implementing an entrepreneurship program as an employee retention strategy, based on the fact that a lot of the millennials in this generation are entrepreneurs. Starting a career as an electrical engineer, I'm excited for the opportunities that I will have to innovate, and I'm confident that my network and the Hillman Entrepreneurship Program and the minor that I have in technology entrepreneurship will take me further than any en engineers out there. And last of all, none of this would have been possible if it wasn't for Mr. Hillman and his family, who generously donated for this program. So I would first, I would last of all, like to thank Mr. Hillman. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, uh, one, one last thing. Um, Okay. It's been an amazing five years, and I'd like to thank everyone who was a part of the journey that I've had, and um, thank you very much. Hi, guys. Um, for most of you guys who don't know me, um, my name is Shabnam Qureshi. I've been with the Hillman for three, for three years. I started at Montgomery College and then I transferred with um, the cohort that's standing over here. So I'm really excited to see that most of us have made it to this point and we will be graduating with really valuable experiences and knowledge that we will be able to continue the rest of our lives with. So before beginning college, I used to worry so much about how I was gonna be able to afford like the infamous prices of textbooks, how I was gonna do room and board, I was willing to, communi to commute, but at the same time, you know, who doesn't want to be able to experience like room and board and living on your own? So I used to stay up all night. My parents are here today too, and they know, they can, they can say how much I used to stress about being able to afford college. It got so bad to the point where I was missing sleep, I wasn't able to think straight. 
I really didn't think I could ever start college. When I started at Montgomery College, I took up a part-time job to pay for little expenses that were coming up, and then I found that it was still hard to maintain a good GPA with the hours that I was working. And I've been working since I was 14, so it was kind of a hard transition to be able to work and then go to full-time school at a college. I started writing at the school newspaper um, because of Ms. Uh, Professor Azavi, who's not here with us today, but she's working at Montgomery College. And I was asked to write an article about the Hillman Entrepreneurs Program, actually. And so I went and I sat and I interviewed with Mrs. Bronco, Ms. Bronco here. And I, she told me about a lot of what the Hillman family stands for, which is um, promoting entrepreneurial mindsets and just promoting like great academic achievements overall through encouraging students to kind of stick together as a family. Well, I started thinking, why don't I apply for this? But then I realized that my GPA was kind of low because I had been working for so long that I don't know if I would ever get in. And still, Ms. Bronco encouraged me to go on, and so I did. And I was actually at work, I was working, and I got a phone call from Ms. Bronco, and she told me that, you know, congratulations, like, you've been accepted. And I just couldn't even finish my sentence. Like, I hung up, and I was like, I can't believe this is happening. You know, I'll be able to go to college. I can afford everything. And so I actually remember being telling the, um, my supervisor that I was going to be cutting down significantly on my hours to pursue full-time school. So I think I remember that Mrs. Bronco, Ms. Bronco told me that while GPA was really important, you know, and my GPA was low, that she saw something in me similar to what um, Dexter had been saying and kind of what all of our stories were in the beginning, that even if that we were lacking in some areas, we made up strongly in other parts. And that gave me so much confidence in myself that I really didn't have. And it's allowed me to be standing here today with you guys speaking in front of the biggest cohort that we're ever graduating with. This program has really allowed me to develop intellectually and has provided me with the chance that I never thought that I would have had if I wasn't doing it without the help of my Hillman family that I've grown incredibly close with over the past three years. I was not a very open person before beginning Hillman and through like so many group projects and all the, you know, the volunteering hours and group projects that we've been working on and presentations, I've really, I've, I really developed a really good bond with all my friends, and it's all because of the Hillman, the Hillman Foundation, so I'm very thankful. Because of Mr. Hillman and his family's generosity and the support and mentoring of our dedicated professors every step of the way, and I really mean like every step of the way, like Ms. Bronco, you were there for us like when you weren't supposed to be, so I really, I thank you. We are all standing here today ready to graduate from a monumental part of our lives. Many of us could not have made it this far if it was not for the financial and mental support, as well as emotional, that Hillman program has provided us with. But it doesn't just stop here. Hillman has provided us with the critical skills, memories, and experiences, and most importantly, with lifelong friends. So although we get to end this chapter of our lives here, I strongly urge my friends that are graduating with me to keep in touch with each other, to be able to like email each other or call or text, be like, hey, how are you guys doing? I hope everything is going well with you. Because if anything, this program and Mr. Hillman has really taught us that the, the biggest and most important thing you can walk away with at the end of the day is your relationships that you've maintained through this endeavor. I'll always remember the times that brought us all together, like the Bear Creek ski trip, freaking out about getting into the University of Maryland from Montgomery College or PG County, wherever we transferred from, and the countless hours of Friday afternoon classes. Hours which would have gone by so, like they would have, which was seemed to go by very quickly because of the friends we had in those classes. You know, it's the end of the week and nobody wants to be stuck in a two, like a two hour class, but still, somehow we got through it because we had our friends sitting next to us. And I'm thankful for you guys for that. Thank you. Um, so I recently lost someone very close to me over spring break, and it made me realize that we should never take our friendships and relationships for granted. Instead, we should, con we should continue to be there for one another long after graduation. So to wrap it up, I just wanted to take this time and sincerely thank Mr. Hillman, Ms. Hillman, and everybody else who has made this possible for us today and investing in us so selflessly.
I think I can speak for everyone here when I say that your support has been life-changing and has inspired us to do the same for our community and one day when we are able to, which shouldn't be too far considering we all have a valuable knowledge now. And to Ms. Bronco, Professor Azavi, and all the other professors who have been a part of this journey, thank you for writing those countless letters of recommendation, I'm looking at you, <laughs> and for making everything flow so smoothly and for sending us those countless reminders and opportunity notifications. This is aimed towards Nancy. Where are you at? Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you for all of those countless reminders. Even though we're college students, you know, it really helps us to kind of get everything in order. And. Um, Hillman has just transformed me from a shy girl who is extremely afraid of taking risks, public speaking, like I'm standing here today, something I never would have been able to do before this experience. And I'm proud to say that because of the sport you all have provided me, I will be going on to pursue a graduate degree this fall with the hopes of applying the invaluable knowledge that I've gained throughout this endeavor. Thank you for believing in all of us so strongly, Mr. Hillman and Ms. Bronco, Nancy, Professor Azavi, and all the professors who are here today with us and who didn't get to make it. everybody hungry? You ready to go? <laughs> I want to thank um, I'm, I've been pretty amazed. Um, Allison, Dexter, Jasmine, Caleb, Shabbat, you're, you were incredible. Your speech has touched me. I, I, I have to say before I even start my speech, you know this has been probably one of the most rewarding thing I have ever done in my life besides giving birth to those people back there. <laughs> and, I, and that's because not only has it taken me out of one realm of my life that I was in forever and that's a long time compared to some of you all, but I've had the opportunity to meet some awesome young people from different cultures and I just delved right in and I just like love every last one of you and every last culture that I was able to touch. I mean, I was just so excited because you all are so beautiful. And I tell you, you all helped me get the job that I had because I, I had to tell them how smart and capable you are. And that when it comes to employing you all, it's best to not ignore you, but it's best to get you on their team because you guys are really smart. I, I was intimidated at first, you know. Still intimidated, but just a little bit. But, um, so my, my uh, speech was gonna be starting off funny, like, you know, as I humbly accept this award. <laughs> But that's the wrong speech. So um, I made it, we made it, we had a goal, we had a vision, we saw what we wanted and we went for it. And I congratulate every last graduate here today. I'm very proud of you and I'm proud to be a part of you. Um, I wanna first thank my family. My baby girl is here and she drove all the way from Kansas. Um, and she brought her lovely wife and my son who is a 2010 Hillman graduate. with his wife, and if anybody does Smash, his name is Ami Inferno. He's famous on YouTube, guys. I just don't do Smash, but that's him. Okay. <laughs> and um, my son, Jelani, who is graduating from Prince George's Community College and on his way to North Florida University. I'm very proud of him. So now, as I stand here today, I give God all the glory because if it were not for my faith in him, I would not be here today. And I told myself I wasn't going to cry, but I might cry because I'm a crybaby. Um, and I'm so grateful to those who've helped me to accomplish this goal. And I have to mention Miss Lewis from PGCC. I mean, I loved her. I, one thing that I remember the most from Miss Lewis is incredible. I'm stressing about a class and I'm like, oh my God, if I don't do this, I'm going to get a C. I can't get a C. I got to get this. She's like, well, just don't get a C. <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't get a C. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'd like to thank, of course, Ms. Bronco, because she was a major support for me. And, but none of this would have been possible without Mr. Hillman. And Mr. Hillman and Cheryl, you have given not only Stephen an opportunity, but myself an opportunity. And that's a legacy that I am very proud to have. Now, my story uh, most likely is very different from most of you all. Um, but it in no way minimizes anyone else's struggle to complete this leg of their journey. As some of you know, or may have guessed, you know, I'm not your traditional student. 
So I, did, I was in high school four or five years ago. It's way longer than that, and I'll let you all guess on that one. Uh, I got married at the age of 19 uh, to my high school love and was a single parent of two adorable kids by the age of 23. I didn't stay single long. Something about me, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> My, my third child came along during my second marriage, that's Jelani, um, and the marriage was very challenging. Um, however, I was blessed to have a successful career as a real estate agent and was part owner of a mortgage company. And I love those particular careers because it afforded me the ability to make a six-figure income while taking care of my family. And that's more important to me than anything else. Uh, but then, you know, and for, for a while we were, we were doing very well. Financially, we were set. Uh, but then I began to have several devastating things happen in my life that eventually led me to where I am standing right here, right now. And just as a sidebar, I, I don't know if anybody has ever read this book, Value in the Valley, but there is value in the valley when you are suffering and going through. There's value there, and you just have to look for it. My, my nephew, whom I love like my son, died at the age of 23. I lost my mortgage company. Then a year later, my mother died, and she was my rock. She was my solid. My ex-husband of 18 years uh, was indicted for wire fraud, and on top of that, the real estate market crashed, and my particular market, which was PG County, completely stopped. So no homes were selling, no one was getting financed, and all the deals, which were five, that I had in the pipeline fell off. <clears throat> so after years of making over six figures, I realized I needed a job. A job. A job. <laughs> but by this time, the job market had changed dramatically, drastically. I had been selling real estate for over 15 years. Jobs that I did not used to require, jobs that did not used to require a college degree now required a college degree. So I, although I had a vast amount of experience in sales and in marketing, I did not have a college degree. So I tried working with my husband at the time who was an entrepreneur, uh, but many of his endeavors did not last because of lack of discipline in his area. So. I found a job at Comcast as a service rep, making $12.50 an hour. <laughs> so that was the worst six months of my life. I don't even put it on my resume. <laughs> Can you imagine going from six figures to $12.50 an hour? It's humbling, very humbling. So one day I realized that no one knew when the housing market would be back and I was tired of hearing the word no because I did not have a degree. So I decided to go back to college. My son Stephen, like I said, had graduated from the Robert H. Business School in 2010 and he's also a Hillman alumni. Um, I believe Stephen, you came in the second year of the program? The second or third year of the program has started. And I think at that time, they were covering 100% at PGCC of the tuition. What's up with that? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, now, Stephen, I, I, this, like I said, this has been an awesome experience, and I just have to make this sidebar because of, I think by now you guys know how important my family is. Stephen met his wife, Felicia, here on campus, and she's fine, as I don't know what. Um, so if any of you guys are looking for, to hook up, trying to figure out how to do that, they can tell you how to do that, because they've, they've been married successfully, and they are very good together. Um, Back on, I'm gonna get back on part. So in 2013, let me see, I had considered applying for the Hillman program for several years, but I figured they wouldn't take me because of my age. But in 2012, I applied, and in, to my surprise, I was accepted. So that was the start of my new journey in life. In 2013, I applied for and was accepted into the Smith Business School, but my struggles was not over. I almost gave up last year. So during the summer of 2015, 
I suffered an emotionally devastating divorce. My home went into foreclosure and I was almost homeless. And I had a son in college at PGCC who still needed my support. So that was it, I was beat, I was done. I went to Ms. Brockle and I told her I needed to take a semester off, but you know, we all know what happens when you take a semester off. It, you probably won't come back. But I needed to find employment, a job. But I needed a break from school. But Ms. Brockle didn't let me quit. She held on to me. I feel like, you know, I feel like I was in, in that scene from the Titanic, actually. <laughs> and I was Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> and she went out, but she pulled me up on a raft with her. You know what I'm saying? She ain't let me go. <laughs> um, she shared her story of heartbreak and struggle with me. Um, and she became my rock. And that's saying a lot seeing that the only other rock in my life was my mother. Her belief in me and her support of me encouraged me to press on. So I would not be standing here today if it were not for her. Uh, and I am not crying. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> uh, it was important for me to stand here I was given a gift that I do not take for granted. Therefore, it was important for me not to let Mr. Hillman down. But more importantly, it was important to me to give my children one more thing to be proud of me, you know, so they can have bragging rights to their friends. You gotta have the bragging rights. Um, so I've completed this leg of my journey. So I'm getting my BS in marketing and the minor in technology entrepreneurship, which at first I really, really was upset that I had to take those classes. Like, seriously, I'm not an engineer. I don't know how to cross the chasm, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I must say, it looks good on my resume. <laughs> and, and so, um, I have overcome financial devastation deep heartbreak and almost paralyzing fear and the loss of almost every possession I had. But the grace of God, but the grace and design of God, by the grace and design of God, I stand humbly before you today proclaiming that I did it. And I've had the opportunity to meet some amazing young people who will go on to do amazing things and that really blesses me. <laughs> so, as you go on, to either get your master's degree or start your careers. Remember, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. There will be some roadblocks, streets that used to be easy to navigate through may suddenly become congested, congested. but keep going. When given the opportunity, remember the gifts of the helping hands that was extended to you and reach back and do the same for someone else. And, the, and in the words of Winston, Winston Churchill, if you're going through hell, keep walking. Thank you. Another round of applause for all our speakers. been waiting patiently so now we're going to call up the graduates um, as I call your name please come up um, you'll receive a Hillman medal from uh, Cheryl Hillman and then Miss Bronco will hand you your certificate um, but first we would like to actually bring up our graduates who graduated this winter um, so first up Lindsay Martin who graduated with a degree in technology management and innovation Are you sure you don't want to say a few words? Positive. Positive. <laughs> okay, and then Douglas Vo, who graduated in sociology.
Okay, so for now our spring and summer graduates. First up, Tamar Adnan. Dolores Uffel. Monica Aragon. Monica Bryan. <laughs> Victoria Chang. Laura Choke. <laughs> Jasmine Claggett. Ileana Hernandez. <laughs> Allison Hishma. Amanda Hishma. Dedrick Jeffries. Patel. 
Dexter Price Jr. Shabnam Qureshi. Andre Rauch. I want a Nancy hug too. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Cumber Sikander. And now I'd like to welcome up, welcome up Dean Cohen, William Cohen, for closing remarks. Before I have to jump in, because being an entrepreneur means that you have to identify an opportunity and fulfill the need or want of your potential customers. Many students, if you notice, they said that we need to stay in contact, we need to stay in touch, we should let this go. So we have a solution for you. So Kingsley, where are you? Kingsley, he's graduated two years ago. He works for Accenture. He's one of our alumni, and this is your. This was my opportunity, and here your solution. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, congratulations, graduates. I am very proud of you guys. Uh, this just takes me back to two years ago when I was sitting there and I definitely understand the emotion. And coming back here is like, it's like a big family reunion over and over again. And uh, I definitely want you guys to um, also feel very proud of this accomplishment. I believe this is a huge milestone in your careers. And uh, been, well, I mean, I've been talking with Gul and a couple of the other directors and we thought, you know what, why does the human entrepreneurs have to stop here? I mean, why, why do we need to leave this great family that we've built over the past couple of years in our educational career? Um, and we think of actually forming a group called the Human Alumni Association, which will be a chapter of the Alumni Association Network. That way you guys will be able to still connect with your fellow peers and work on your own individual projects. And also, we are also even thinking of planning different events to keep you guys engaged, um, to be part of the school. Also, um, there's also different ways and, uh, that you could serve. Um, I think if you guys are very are interested in um, giving back to the program, this is an excellent way. Uh, a couple of things we need. We need 150 petitions. Um, and we need this uh, signed by the end of this month. So our goal is, uh, I've been talking with myself and a couple of the other alums um, at the back. Uh, if you're an alum, could you raise your hand? Can you guys give them a round of applause? So uh, they've worked tirelessly in this program. They've been very engaged and I mean, um, they share the same passion as I do of just, just giving back to the students and also paving the way for the next generation of human. Um, entrepreneurs. 
Um, and I just want I just want to congratulate them. And also, um, they also uh, we also been creating different strategy of how we could have you guys engage. And we have a couple of activities planned out. And so, if you guys are leaving, make sure to grab a flyer of some of the activities um, that we have we have planned for this year. And also, um, if you guys can before you guys leave today, um, walk to the back of the session. You will see a really handsome looking guy uh, wearing the glasses and the gray shirt. <laughs> Look for him and sign the petition. Um, one more thing, um, also if you're a, a, a con graduate and you really want to stay, be part of the association, you want to be able to serve as a leader, we have a couple of roles available. Um, so reach out to me and or any of the alums at the back and talk to them of how you could get involved in, in what we're doing right now. And again, one congratulations for all you guys are doing. Um, this is a huge milestone, and uh, I'm very proud of you. And if you guys need any help, or um, even after graduation, if you guys want to con connect uh, with me or anybody else, uh, feel free to reach out to us. And uh, thank you. All right. And he really means it with his offer to whenever Accenture has a career fair here. <laughs> we get our own people, and then Andre, we send our own people's resumes. So we are slowly but surely conquering the entire top four, and there are so many human entrepreneurs that are working there right now. So at the end, please just go see the auntie there, he's getting petition, please support them. For that, I know we stayed in last associate provost, lead for undergraduate studies, Dr. Bill Cohen, to do closing remarks. Thank you very much. I recognize that I am all that stands between you and that reception, so I'm going to keep this very brief. I just want to say congratulations to the extraordinary students who are uh, completing this program and graduating from the university for all of your incredible accomplishments. This program does fantastic things, and we are so grateful to the Hillman family for their ongoing support of it, to our incredible partners at Montgomery and Prince George's County Community Colleges, to the family, families and friends of all of these students who show up here and support these students and ensure that they make it through every day. You are incredible. Thank you for all your support. And thank you, Rule and Nancy and everyone who works uh, for the program, for the extraordinary things you do. This program has produced so many graduates and has so many students in the pipeline who are doing the wonderful things you've heard about, you saw in the poster sessions uh, on the way in. They have uh, four, four of our uh, Hillman students are McNair Scholars, which is an extraordinary program and will lead them to even more incredible futures. Uh, the Hillman team came in the second place for the Campus Wide Do Good Challenges here, which is an incredible uh, opportunity and accomplishment. So we couldn't be happier with the wonderful things that this program does for this campus. The, the university is incredibly proud of this program, and we thank you all for coming. Uh, congratulations, and enjoy the reception. Thanks for your patience. You were all great. Please help yourself join us and me. Well, thank you for all coming. Thank you. Really quick as they're opening up the food, Ms. Franco. None of this would happen without her guidance, her vision, her tireless effort. So we would all just like to say thank you to Ms. Franco. Let's give her a round of applause.